Hi everyone, uh, so the video that you're about to watch is an introduction on manufacturing. It's just my explanation of how manufacturing works, every, all the concepts, all the different definitions. Whether you're in grade 10, 11 or 12, I always start with this picture. So um, even if you're in grade 12, I would encourage you to watch this video. It will re really help you just to understand where we are going, where we headed and also where we started because grade 12 is basically just um, a re recap of everything you've done 10 and 11. Right, so to start, you need to understand that we've got three different sections in manufacturing. And the business that I'm going to use in my example is a bakery baking cakes. So for the bakery, we are going to have what I call a store room one. Okay, so your store room one is basically like your scullery. Okay, you're going to store all your ingredients there. If you are a furniture business, obviously it will not be a scullery, but a full-scale big storeroom. But for our purposes now, we're going to look at a scullery for my ingredients to bake my cake. So the first category that you need to understand is we get what is called direct raw materials. And direct raw materials are all the ingredients that I can measure specifically when I bake my cakes. So that will be things like flour and eggs and oil and cocoa and sugar. I'm going to measure it exactly. I'm going to use the exact uh, measurements when I bake my cake. Then the other category that we get is indirect raw materials. They are also used in my cake but I cannot necessarily measure them that well. So the best example for cake baking is hundreds and thousands. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle it on top of my cake and yes, you can now be clever and tell me, ma'am, you can measure teaspoons full of hundreds and thousands, but if my hand shakes a little bit as I throw them on, I'm going ha to have one blob over there, then I need to throw out more. So just for our purposes, it's something that you cannot measure exactly. If we were to look at furniture, it might be something like the varnish. You cannot measure exactly to the point how much you're going to use okay then so that's my scullery then we're gonna go the second room is basically the floor of the factory okay um, in our case it will then be the kitchen so the first thing that I need in my kitchen is you'll have to excuse my pictures but I think it just adds to everything is you need a chef. The chef will be the person actually touching the product, making the product. Therefore, we'll call the chef direct labor. The chef will normally be paid or the direct laborer will normally be paid with a wage. We also refer to them as factory workers. Okay, if we can contribute towards UIF for them, it will be added to their direct labor cost. Then I will also have someone who's going to clean, and this is now where the picture becomes funny. <laughs> um, that's a loud hailer. You're going to have a supervisor as well. So the cleaner. And the manager or the supervisor will be paid normally. We're going to refer to them as they get a salary. And that is the indirect labor. Similarly, if we contribute towards UIF for them, that will be added to the direct labor cost. Oh, indirect, sorry, indirect labor cost. Then we have other 
general expenses that I need to pay in order to run my factory and we call them factory overheads okay and this will now be things like rent expense insurance depreciation water and electricity um, anything that I need to pay but very importantly I have to pay them for the factory they are listed as factory overheads but then you also need to know that indirect labor will also be classified under factory overheads as well as indirect raw materials will also be classified under factory overheads then if we go back to looking at the whole factory my chef will go into the scullery and he's going to take out what he needs in order to bake cakes so there might be a whole lot of bags of flour a couple of trays of eggs a couple of bottles of oil etc he's only going to take the part that he needs to bake cakes for that specific day so you will take products out to the kitchen to bake now this is very important because in all your activities they're going to use the term raw materials or indirect raw materials issued to the factory or issued to production the other times sometimes they also talk about used in production it's very important to make a distinction as to what is there what you bought extra what is left afterwards and what is issued to the kitchen to bake cakes then it might also happen during a specific time that the chef put all the cakes in the oven and at 4.30 in the afternoon the cakes are still in the oven. Now in order to ice that cake, the cake has to come out, cool down and then it can be iced. So 4.30 in the afternoon there will only be time for the cakes to come out of the oven but he will not be able to ice them and finish them. They will then stay in the kitchen and once they are finished they will be placed in a specific place in order to be sold. So whatever is left or a half done product in the kitchen we call work in progress okay then once a cake is done the cake will move to the final store room the final store room is for all the finished goods so my finished cake will be there okay the only thing that ever happens in my finished storage room is there might be three cakes there already then we add four more cakes to my finished storage room which means I then um, and I might sell there will be a sale of two of them three plus four equals seven minus two that I sold will be five left that's basically all that happens in my final storage room then what you also need to take note of is that in some cases this is it that's my factory storeroom one the floor and then the final storeroom okay if this is a well operating big factory then it means that i might have two different departments in here as well i might have an admin department working with me and I might have a little shop as well where I decide to sell cakes to the public uh, 
the shop is referred to as sales and distribution. Now, the only thing that happens in here is we will have general costs to pay, very similar to what I pay in the factory. But now here will there will be specific things extra. Any finance cost will be part of admin. Any stationery will be part of admin. A receptionist fee. And then any depreciation or any other general expenses for, and this is now very important, office equipment will go into admin. Then we'll also have rent expense and insurance and water and electricity and everything. But these costs are specifically only for admin. For sales and distribution, we will have commission. Uh, bad dates, advertisements, and then there might be depreciation or any other expenses, and this is now very important for the vehicle, because the vehicle is used to go and deliver the product to the customer. So over here, depreciation will be for the factory equipment, over there it will be for the office equipment and over there for the vehicle okay the vehicle can be used by the factory but then you will divide the cost proportionally but that's basically then how it goes okay then you need to know that direct materials and direct labor added together is called prime cost then you need to know that the prime cost plus factory overheads is the total cost of production okay and then the last category of expenses that we're going to look at is either fixed or variable cost you must be able to classify them i'm just looking for a color pen that i haven't used so direct raw materials will be seen as a variable cost direct labor will be seen as a variable cost as well as sales and distribution will be seen as a variable cost factory overheads as well as admin in its total form will be seen as fixed costs okay right so that is basically just the intro to manufacturing this is a nice picture to just keep in your book and to help you just understand the basic concepts and now we will then go and delve into it a bit deeper but this is basic basically where you start